uh, maybe well known because of his uh, victory in a Players Cup, but uh, yeah, we can go right ahead and uh, jump into his profile. So uh, like we mentioned, Players Cup 4 champion uh, a couple of years ago, uh, also being a uh, basically a nine-time regional champion, um, including mm. you know three regionals and six special events. Uh, that is really nothing to sneeze at, and I don't know if anybody has more accolades than that on the regional front. So uh, very, very impressive, and uh, the team also looks very, very strong. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, looking at this this team, there's a lot of uh, both offense, but defense as well i think like looking at something like that king gambit going for the swords dance can create itself a bit of a threat but it's one of those pokemon that sits on the field and uh, feels like it's uh, really difficult to knock out unless you have the right pokemon and of course that gastrodon is going to be doing a lot of work because seeing two gastrodon on uh, on a broadcast in one day is is a real treat here because it's not a pokemon yeah. that gets taken to the the regional international circuit quite as commonly but for these draft leagues where you're only playing one match a week, Pokemon like Gastron that really swing the momentum of a match, if you mm. if you see an opportunity to bring Pokemon like that, they could be really, really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And plus it's the right form. Uh, that's up for debate for me. Some people. Well, but one mm. other, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, thing I want to know is... <laughs> All right, well, before I break out any for, uh, contention here, I want to point out the King Gambit <laughs> is actually not supported by any kind of Rage Powder or Follow Me, uh, which I think is quite interesting because that's a pretty common pairing. Um, right. And Ogre Pond is actually more offensive with the Swords Dance variant, so I think Renzo probably has a lot of uh, confidence in his uh, you know positioning, you know, making sure that the King Gambit isn't you know staring down a fighting tech, for example, um, really goes to show that uh, his caliber of play and his confidence. So yeah, I'm excited to see how he ends up playing this team because I've certainly never seen something like it. It's a great observation there, Yuki, actually, because like a lot of what Renzo looks like he's trying to do is create offensive positioning where like the Flutter Mane's knock, uh, threatening a, a knockout and therefore to the side of it, King Gambit's just getting a cheeky swords dance off and cementing that position in uh, in the game. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's how the, the positioning works out with the way that Renzo plays this set. But let's hop on over to Adam's side and see what Adam's going to be running as well as we see uh, a really great set of accolades for Adam as well. Chirin special event top eight and actually uh, that was the event the famous uh, side freeze dry into an, a fire terror annihilate and the annihilate getting frozen oh. right, right at the start of the tournament and then still making top eight in the event. That's a really really nice accolade to have. A global challenge to top 16 European international champions chips day two and uh, getting global challenge one top 16 as well yeah i'm very uh, glad to be casting with you not only because you're you but because you can provide these kind of accolades that cannot be captured on screen if only i could be known as uh you know the guy who froze their own on life and still made top eight <laughs> so yeah. very very cool and look at this team also very cool uh you see this tortoise uh you know you really speak scraping uh you know really hyper offense but this golden goes actually more of the bulkier variants that use nasty plot to you know slowly um you know set up for those big naked reigns uh unlike yeah. the torch spec which you might typically see on these kind of themes uh you also see double water in the ogre pond the earth crew really trying to take advantage of the rain dance from tortoise but unfortunately for adam we do see that gastrodon over on renzo's side so uh, it actually might be a gastrodon game I think I think that's probably likely to be the case, Yuki. I really like that call out there. Uh, what I do like to see as well is the Terra Fire on King Gambit uh, being blocked by the Gastrodon on Renzo's side, and uh, that's something something Adam's going to have to deal with. But I think we're looking at the composition that Adam has here, uh, that big damage with the Arcanine uh, being able to go for say those uh, Terra Fairy Terra Blasts uh, into. Uh, Renzo's side of the field, get off those big extreme speeds, launch down a lot of damage. I think that Golden Go is going to really struggle in this particular matchup, being able to, you know, be threatened so, so much by Pokemon on Renzo's side. Yeah, like Gastrodon, which already has a really good matchup into uh, Adam's team. So uh, I also do agree that the Arcanine has a, a lot of, on its back, especially if the Gastrodon were to Terrastalize into the Fire type, then the Ogre Pond can't even touch it with the Power Whip. So it's going to become mm. all about the Rock Slide game with the Arcanine. So yeah, lots of really interesting aspects in this matchup. And I'm just excited to see how it plays out. So 
we can go ahead and check out what the game one will look like uh, briefly. As we see the leads coming out uh, from, uh, I believe this is Adam's end with Tornus and Iron Hands. Yeah, looks that way. Tornus Iron Hands for Adam and Renzo leading off with the Iron Hands and Fluttermane. Wow, that was a quick lock and I, I might have missed it. <laughs> I might have missed it bad. Was it a fake out and a dazzling gleam? Do you know what, Yuki, I missed it too, but like in this position, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if a fake out Dazzling Gleam would be the, the move of choice for Renzo. It's like, you've got quite a lot of damage that you're threatening on the field, and uh, Adam's kind of in a position where he's got to take a little bit of time to set up before he can deal that damage back. Yeah, well, it seems like Adam is not taking the bait on both the Dazzling Gleam or the fake out, and uh, switching to something that takes these hits a lot better uh, in the Arcanine, so... Uh, especially with this uh, Fluttermane being locked in with the Choice Specs item. Uh, definitely not going to be able to do that much damage in that slot. And Tailwind coming out from that tournament is going to be helping that Choice Band Arcanine out a little bit in future turns. You're right, Yuki, it is that Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Fluttermane and doing sort of like okay damage, but for a Pokemon that's carrying a Choice Specs, that Tornadus didn't take much damage at all. Yeah, and uh, this Arcanine seems to be pretty well positioned for now, uh, especially if it terrestrializes, this could do a lot of damage to the Iron Hands, uh, maybe even knock out uh, the Flutter Main with the uh, Choice Bandit and Rock Slide. But as we all know, uh, the Gastrodon <laughs> is probably lurking in the back, and that has an excellent matchup into this Pokemon. So yeah, I, I think it'll be uh, interesting to see what move uh, Arcanine locks into here, since uh, that is definitely going to be the biggest offense uh, at Adam's disposal against the Gastrodon. And seeing all of that offense coming onto the field, Renzo switching out into that Gastrodon. You are right, Yuki. It is a Gastrodon game that we've got. But a Terra coming out from what looks like Adam's side of the field. But it's going to be the Terra Fairy on that Arcanine uh, coming out there. That's going to launch a lot of pressure down onto the Iron Hands if he does lock in that Terra Fairy. Terror Blast, but first a Bleak Wind Storm doing a, a good amount of chip damage there to the Gastrodon, and it is the Terror Blast following it up. It's going to be into that Gastrodon. It was a Gastrodon game. It's going to still be a Gastrodon game. Yes, it Ooh. is. Gastrodon hanging on with just 40 hit points there, munching on its Citrus Berry, going up back up to just a little bit less than half of its health. And what a great offensive and defensive Terror with that Arcanine with the Drain Punch not doing almost any damage from that Iron Hand into it. Yeah, I think that was a turn that really made a lot of sense for both players. Uh, from uh, Adam's perspective, uh, Rassalizing to Fairy makes uh, the Iron Hand's damage output uh, go down a lot since the Drain Punch is any uh, no longer super effective, and the Heavy Slam doesn't do that much damage based on how heavy Arcanine is. Uh, whereas on Renzo's end, uh, before the Arcanine terrestrializes, uh, Dazzling Gleam is not going to do a lot of damage. Might even get knocked out first uh, if that Terror Blast had connected. Uh, so switched out into the Gastron that can take um, the hits a lot better. So a uh, really good play from both ends. But uh, the Gastron, despite the Citrus Fairy, is taking a lot of damage. So uh, I'm curious to see how they might be able to preserve it uh, as the scale one is still active and the aggression is coming out from Adam's end. Yeah, I think so. Like and I'm making a good switch here, getting that Iron Hands in, uh, not wanting the Tornadus to go down, just in case he needs that uh, Tailwind a little bit later in the match. Uh, Terra Blast though, following straight up into Iron Hands. Renzo not committing that Terra whatsoever, but didn't need to. That Iron Hand hangs on wow. with a sliver. Wild Charge going into Iron Hands that's just switched in there for Adam and not enough recoil to knock it out. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that happens when you're playing at the high level where the obvious move uh, is what you uh, kind of have to not respect at times to get yourself back in the game, and that's what yeah. Renzo did. You know, protecting the Gastrodon uh, rather than the Iron Hands, which is going to take super effective damage, but uh, really gets punished for it uh, as Adam just goes for the offense there. And yeah, the problem with uh, the board on Renzo's end is that he has two Pokemon that are not only at low HP, but are also uh, very slow in nature. And with no like trick room in sight for Renzo, uh, these Pokemon are basically just like you know waiting to get knocked out. So uh, you know, definitely from a positioning perspective, uh, Renzo uh, a little bit behind. He's certainly a little bit behind, but that Tailwind is going to be ending soon. With that Tornadus coming in, there could be an opportunity for Renzo to do a little bit of damage into that. 
the Gastrodon though also switching out into that Ogre Pond. So maybe trying to catch a Terror Blast into the Gastrodon, but Adam not falling for it whatsoever. Heavy Slam, even though it's such low damage, wow. hand resisted. With a critical, do you know what, Yuki, I'm not sure if that critical hit was needed or not. I mean, it was only 12 HP, but that's a big 12 HP when you're going for something like a Heavy Slam. But it is enough to knock out Renzo's Iron Hand, so a kind of safe play there from Adam, respecting that Fluttermane in the back. Uh, Renzo wisely, I think, not switching it in, but gets to get it in for free on this turn. Yeah, I mean, I totally get where Am's coming from, right? Like, I mean, it's so tempting to hit Drain Punch in through the Iron Hands, so, okay, maybe I can try to whip it with the Flutter Main and coming from yeah. the Heavy Slam, but I don't know, that Sumo Wrestler <laughs> Pokemon, pretty big, and also resisting it by nature, so I was thinking as that connected, like, is that a crit? And then it was a crit, so I guess yeah. we'll never know. <laughs> the, the big 12 HP critical hit is, uh, is always a wonder to behold. Uh, but yeah, looking looking at this position now, it's like I quite like the position that, that Adam's got himself into. Uh, but with the Terra committed already on the Arcanine, that Iron Hands is looking a little bit more vulnerable to uh, Renzo's uh, Fluttermane, especially with this Terra Fairy coming out from the Fluttermane. I'm not sure if that's a Moonblast, whether that Iron Hands is going to survive. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty interested to see that this Fluttermane had, uh, you know, uh, Terrastalize instead, because depending on how the speed uh, works out, this Iron Hands could be faster than the Fluttermane. Oh, oh but it's the yeah, Fluttermane the going so first. Faster. Yeah, getting that so, Dazzling Gleam, gleam off onto the field. And yeah, we uh, see the uh, turn end with the Ivy Cudgel knocking out the Iron Hands, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty uh, surprised to see that the uh, Ogre Pond didn't Terrastalize instead, because uh, you end up uh, becoming uh, not only a lot stronger in your um, physical damage output, but also uh, not taking super effective damage from the Bleak Wind Storm. So, um, yeah, with this Fluttermane staring down this Arcanine uh, in Tailwind, uh, it's looking a lot uh, scarier, but uh, yeah, I guess I also get the Overpawn not terrestrializing since uh, the matchup into the Arcanine is uh, pretty bad on its own. Yeah, I think like, the ability for the Arcanine to come in and intimidate and uh, take away the, that power boost that you get from Embody Aspect uh, on the Ogre Pond, I think is maybe uh, quite important here to make sure that Renzo's damage output stays consistent. And of course, with that Arcanine now a fairy type, it's able to be you know, taking normal damage from the Dazzling Gleam from that Fluttermane. So maybe Renzo thinking that he doesn't need it, but wow, a oh. big from the Bleak Wind Storm. That one, I could tell you for sure, was a critical hit because that <laughs> Ogre Pond has a, a lot of special defense. So, uh, yeah, I think that was a pretty critical uh, critical hit, uh, critical so to critical speak, uh, especially with this uh, Arcanine not going for the Rock Slide and going straight for the Knockout into the Flutter Main. So, yeah, things maybe could have ended up differently, although uh, I don't know if the Ogre Pond had it in it to uh, get a Knockout on the Arcanine in return. But yeah, this certainly uh, seals up the deal uh, for Adam as the Gastrodon uh, has all its friends gone. Yeah, no more no more friends in sight with that Gastrodon coming back onto the field. I really like that lock into um, Terra Blast rather than Rock Slide. But it's not only a you in. We'll have to see going into game two if Renzo brings it and whether or not those water types come to the game. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really loving that call out, Yuki. Absolutely, and yeah, we're going to kick off the second game. Uh, I've seen the adjustment already with the Water <laughs> Urshifu uh, coming out from Adam's end. And uh, yeah, is the Gastrodon in the back of Lorenzo as the Fluttermane Ira hands come out. <laughs> this is really tense here, and I really like the adjustment there. Whether or not both players have made exactly the same adjustment, we'll have to see. Um, I, I'm really... Uh, I'm really feeling privileged to be watching from Renzo's perspective because we're going to get the, the sneak yes. preview as to whether that, whether <laughs> yeah. that Gastron's in the back. Let's go on, Renzo, click that button. Yeah, it feels like I'm watching. I'm reading like a mystery novel where you don't know who like the murderer is at the end and then you get to see, oh, it's the Gastrodon. It's actually there. Spoilers. So, yeah, a little bit of a sneak preview spoiler. But yeah, I mean, compared to the first game, right, I think the uh, Gastrodon's actually really well positioned. Uh, although the Earth Crew does switch out, like really wants to face down those two Pokemon. So maybe uh, Adam respecting that and bring out the Arcanine, but probably still doesn't want to stare down the Gastrodon unless it Terrastalizes. I, I do like that Arcanine switch in there. Getting the Intimidate off onto the Iron Hands is always big. Putting it in front of a Fluttermane is also big. But the Urshifu in the lead there, whether or not Adam had it in the previous game, we don't know. 
Uh, but seeing the Urshifu there kind of baiting out that gap drum in that turn, making sure that if it was there that Renzo felt the need to switch it in to protect that flutter main, I thought was a really good way of getting things started. Dazzling Gleam going into the Arcanine, going into that Iron Hands that's actually just tearing its way away from being a super effective hit, not taking any damage at all, replying with a big heavy slam. And I'm sure that Urshifu in the back for Adam is feeling a little bit uh, a little bit safer right now. Yes, absolutely. And even though Renzo uh, lost a Pokemon this turn, I'm still not sure. I don't know if I actually hate being in his position. Uh, was able to, you know, bait the Iron Hands to Terrastalize uh, just with the presence of the uh, Fluttermane. And now the Arcanine can't go for the defensive Terrastalization or the offensive one. Uh, so uh, really matching up poorly into the Scastrodon now, both uh, offensively and defensively. So, mm. uh, you know, maybe I'm biased wanting to see this uh, Gastrodon shine, but it is <laughs> a lot better for it. Um, and as we see the Arcanine retreating. Yeah, so Tornadus coming in a good uh, sort of type resistance thing going on there where Tornadus wants to switch into something like an Earth Power. And of course, now that that Iron Hands has gone for its Terra Grass, it's going to be weak to this U-turn. But Urshifu is not going to be weak to the U-turn whatsoever. Landorus gets to switch out where Adam is not doing any damage whatsoever. And actually, that was something that I was worried about for Renzo on that uh, particular turn that Adam could launch some attacks into a likely iron hat uh, uh, likely you turning landorus into an iron hands uh there but as it turns out renzo taking no damage getting the fake out onto the board and that's a big deal with fake out just coming in yeah and uh, really good heads up play from adam uh you know having having just taken uh a knockout like you might think okay i need to keep pushing the damage forward but you know going just for a double switch uh, worked out really well for him, taking negligible damage from the U-turn and taking no damage from that Earth Power. Um, and yeah, I'd still say that the Gastronon looks uh, pretty good here, but uh, Adam is definitely the one that has the three control in the offense for now. And the Iron Hands getting to switch in, but a close combat is a great move going into that Gastronon without the Landorus switching in this turn. It's doing full damage, and the Gastronon really feeling that having to munch on its citrus berry to bring it just back over half of its health if landorus doesn't switch in next turn then it's likely oh my lord that that gastro is going down next turn put a wild charge into that terra grass iron hands followed up by an ice beam is not even not even touching that iron hands whatsoever yeah, I'd say that turn was a pretty big deal for Adam because the only Pokemon he really has left that can do significant damage to the Gastrodon is that Urshifu. Uh, and, you know, close combat's uh, drawback usually is that you lose your defenses, but if in that turn uh, you don't end up losing any of your defenses, then uh, it almost becomes like a free high power attack. Uh, but we see that the Urshifu doesn't end up uh, switching out uh, thanks to the fake out uh, coming out from. Uh, Adam's Ooh. Iron Hands, so a really well well done turn from Adam, uh, being able to keep the offense going thanks to the fake out. A really, a really nice position now though for Renzo being able to switch into that close combat. Took a little bit more damage on the switch in on that Landorus than I really expected, but that's two close combats for that Urshifu uh, this turn. So even a Stomping Tantrum is possibly going to be able to knock out that Urshifu and. With that as the, one of the last damage dealing uh, Pokemon that's on Adam's side of the field to deal with that Gastron that you called out there, Yuki, it's definitely not going to be wanting to uh, take too much more damage. I think Adam's going to want to really uh, keep it preserved for later in the match. Yeah, but we see the close combat coming out, <laughs> playing a critical hit onto the Iron Hands, doing just an absolutely explosive amount of damage, taking its third uh, defense drop as well, and the Terra Blast going into the Tortoise, so uh, another move in which the uh, Urshifu is able to get some close combats off uh, without uh, too much consequence, but as I say that, the Drain Punch goes in, Iron Hand's able to go uh, take out the Urshifu while getting a lot of health back thanks to all those close combats. I really love that Drain Punch as well, because with all of those drops, it's either going to be switching into potentially an Arcanine, but you certainly want to be able to preserve the Iron Hands for later if you're uh, Adam, so not likely that the Tornadus is going to switch in that turn with the threat of Landorus there. Um, and Arcanine here coming in is going to be able to get that Intimidate finally a little bit more safely on the field. 
Right, yeah, I, I love that I called that out because the tortoise really kind of switched into that slot, I'd say, because, you know, the, the natural reaction to Earth Boost to Wild Charge. So, right. you definitely don't want the tortoise to be taking that. So, uh, yeah, I think it was either going to be the Arcanine or the Earth Boost that's going to take that Drain Punch. So, a really great call out uh, as we see the Gastron taking uh, the stage again. And a Tailwind going up from Tornadus on Adam's side of the field. Flare Blitz launching down into that Gastrodon, and we're seeing the effect of the Choice Band before it's locked in to Intimidate. And a Terra Blast coming out from the Landorus. A really important position to note that that Landorus is locked in to Terra Blast here, so that Arcanine's probably feeling a lot more safe than it usually would in this uh, situation. Yep, and uh, that was a pretty brave move from the Landorus, I'd say, because, uh, you know, the Arcanine could have easily gone for a Rock Slide. Um, that turn and uh, yeah, instead just uh, said you know I'm gonna I'm, I'm sure you're gonna try to knock at the Iron Hands instead of the Landorus and stayed in and yeah that's the kind of aggressive playing you need to uh, keep your head um, keep yourself back in the game so yeah the Scaffron's again at low health so uh, I'm curious to know if they'll be able to launch another attack in um, but yeah I definitely Renzo's not out of this one yet no it's like. Where Adam's Arcanide is locked into Flare Blitz and where there's a fake out on the field, it's a really difficult position to, to uh, navigate here where uh, you've got to make sure if you're Adam that you're launching the Flare Blitz into the right slot because a Pokemon like Gastrodon does love to carry Protect and make sure it's not taking any damage, but it's a Flare Blitz into the Iron Hands. Wow. No fake out whatsoever. It's going to be a knockout from 50% HP and again, uh, talking about how effective that choice band is in this situation. Drain Punch going into that Gastrodon. So I'm taking a bit of a risk there because if the Landorus just went for a Terra Blast uh, and an Earth Power, then Adam could have been down two Pokemon in this situation. Yeah, it just really goes to show the power of Arcanine. Um, it's a Pokemon that has uh, you know, really strong attacks. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, Adam doesn't have uh, the head smashed, but you know, Flare Blitz is already very strong. Having the uh, high priority move Extreme Speed, that's also very strong. Uh, it just has a little, huge arsenal to it, and when you pair it with Choice Band, uh, you can knock out really bulky Pokemon like Iron Hands. Oh, well, the Arcanine so is out going into Landorus. Landorus and Tailwind. Wow, that's not quite enough with that Intimidate to get the KO there. Landorus gets to reply with a Terra Blast. That Iron Hands with that Terra Blast is not going to appreciate that whatsoever and the two KOs that we were just talking about looks like they're lining up one after the other. Oh yeah, we see the Gastron get that big knockout with the Earth Power on Arcanine. Uh, four times super effective on an Arcanine at Red Health. Probably took out like 20 of them at once. <laughs> and yeah, uh, we just have the Pokemon in the back for Adam uh, or they were uh, just as like I completely agree with you, and I think a part of it is Renzo maybe had gotten baited by seeing the Urshifu. So you see the Urshifu, you see the Iron Hand, you're like, oh, two Pokemon yeah. weak to fairy type uh, attack. Like, I must go for his friend move. Yeah. So yeah, maybe in the later you might, uh, or Renzo might expect that the Urshifu would retreat, and uh, yeah, and maybe this time the Iron Hands doesn't terrestrialize based on uh, what happened in this game. So lots of mind games going into this third game. I'm just excited to see the adaptations again. Is the Gastrodon going to be there or not? Is the Water type going to be there or not? Um, All right, we're going to make the call today. here as we go into game one. Before we see it on the field, is Gastron... Okay, Gastron. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make that a little bit of a bigger thing, Yuki, but yeah, Gastrodon leading out with that iron hand. But it's the Ogapon Wellspring on Adam's side of the field leading off with that Tornadus and immediately grass-type pressure going into that Gastrodon. Yep, so uh, Renzo's forced to you know, react somehow either with the fake out, the translation, or switching out, but the Gastrodon is looking so good um, on the field right now. Even with this Iron Hands coming in, uh, you know, the Wild Charge's strongest move uh, not going to be able to do that much damage. So, uh, yeah, looking really good for this Gastrodon, even though it gets off uh, minimal damage this turn uh, with the Ice Beam. A, a nice little start there for Renzo getting a little bit of damage onto the field, but yeah, that Gastrodon now needs to got to do something with the threat of fake out coming in from Adam's side of the field and uh, put it um, uh, put himself in a little bit of a better position. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, now there is uh, no more fake out that Renzo can rely on to protect his Gastrodon. So, uh, curious to see uh, how he reacts and then also how Adam might, uh, uh, you know, maybe foresee that he can't just get a free grass type attack into the Gastrodon. Uh, as the lander switches and uh, spreading intimidate on two physical attackers. 
yeah, it's a really effective intimidate in this position. I think wisely the Gastrodon going for the Protect Renzo, probably not wanting to commit the Terror just yet. And of course, Gastrodon will protect that Landorus from an Ivy Cudgel, but it won't protect it from a Power Whip coming out from that Ogre Pond. And that did quite a lot of damage. Yeah, even with Intimidate, it uh, looks like the next one will probably knock out. And uh, really good choice on Adam, uh, or move selection from Adam, where if it was something like a Horn Leech, that'll do, you know, almost half the damage. So it might not be able to get another knockout on this Landorus. But now, uh, yeah, this Landorus is not for long and it might have to be forced to U-turn out. Yeah, I think U-turn would be... Yeah, as, as I think we were talking about a little bit earlier on the broadcast, U-turn, the signature move of Landorus in this format here. But... Uh, it is going to be that defensive terror coming out from the Gastrodon going for uh, making sure that it's not weak to something like a power whip coming out from the Ogre Pond on Adam's side of the field. And uh, wow, okay. So Adam going for the protect, protecting from the U turn, but Renzo not falling for it whatsoever. Equally, Adam not falling for going for an attack into that Gastrodon that turn. So gets a lot of, uh, a little bit more time to develop what he's going to be. Uh, using and uh, maybe make a little bit of a different uh, different call on the way that he needs to now deal with that Gastrodon, given that it's fire time. Yeah, it's really interesting how these interactions go because it looked like Adam, you know, might have had uh, the advantage from uh, you know looking at the board state where you can go for a power whip if you terrestrialize. Uh, you know, you can definitely survive uh, any maybe terror blast coming out from the Landris, but uh, go for the protect, uh, the more passive move. Uh, and Renzo totally takes advantage of that. You turning into the Pokemon uh, that can't protect, and now uh, mm. has to switch out that spot again, probably uh, thanks to the Yawn. Right, and you know, a second Intimidate is probably going to survive, make that Landorus survive. But the Landorus has got to switch in potentially this turn or next turn on a potential Bleak Wind Storm from that Tornado. So uh, there's a lot of uh, threats coming out from Adam's side of the field. But Adam, I think playing this really nice and conservatively, not wanting that Tornadus to take too much damage, getting the Iron Hand in, uh, locking into the Power Whip, which has been pretty pretty good so far. Uh, two for two hits there, as Wild Charge goes into uh, the Iron Hand on Adam's side of the field. And one little detail that I missed previously was that Tornadus was going to fall asleep if Adam didn't switch it out. Right, and exactly because of that reason, maybe I would have wanted Renzo to go for a more aggressive read that turn, maybe go for an Earth Power into that slot, because I think right. as a Gastrodon player that's terrified, the Pokemon you're really the scared of the most now is that Arcanine. So uh, yeah. with the Iron Hands or the Arcanine potentially switching in, I think, yeah, it could have been a good call for an Earth Power, but uh, getting that Yawn into that uh, Ogre Pond slot means uh, Renzo still has a lot of momentum going for them. We'll see if it's going to be that aggressive play this turn as the tornado switches in once again uh, but we're gonna see yawn after yawn after yawn coming out there <laughs> from that Renz, uh, from Renzo's Gastrodon and I really like the pressure that Renzo is putting on here because these games have been so tight so far and with a Pokemon switching out for Adam every single turn uh, because if you don't switch out then you're not acting and there's not enough margin in there for Adam to afford one of his Pokemon to fall asleep into this situation. So yeah, Adam's really got to find a way to deal with that Gastrodon really, really quickly. Yeah, I think the way Renzo's playing is uh, pretty, um, makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, usually Yon, you know, maybe not as appealing if you're not, you don't have, uh, you know, maybe hazards of like stealth rocks to punish your opponent for switching, but I think his judgment is okay. I think my Gastrodon damage output isn't uh, that big, so uh, instead of trying to do damage and making a 2v2, I'm just going to yawn every turn and make it basically a 1v1. And I'm, pr I'm confident that my Iron Hands can do a lot of damage. And it's a double switch here from Adam, bringing in that Ogre Pond and that Arcanine. Arcanine having to take a wild charge for its troubles. Is it going to be the Earth Power? Follow up there from the Gastrodon node, more Yawn coming out, that Ogre Pond rather than the Arcanine. I think that's a really, really big deal there for Adam. Getting that Arcanine in on a turn where it's able to just launch out a Rock Slide could be the key for Adam getting back into this match. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is exactly the position Adam was looking for to get the Arcanine in without being Yawn, uh, without being actively threatened. But as I say that, this. Iron Hands is there, ready to you know go for a Drain Punch, um, and the Gastron is also ready to go for a Yawn. So uh, you know, regardless of what move uh, Arcanine goes for, um, it's 
still being threatened in return by either hands and Gapridon. So uh, I think it'll be pretty critical to see uh, what move uh, Arcanine walks into here as it's being intimidated. Oh, it's going to be probably a Terror Blast coming out here from this Iron Hand. Oh, sorry, from this Arcanine here launching out lightly into the Iron Hands, and I love this call out here. Uh, once you've knocked out... Well, will it KO the... to Intimidate? That's the... Well, that's the that's question. We'll have to see. Terror Blast coming out is going to land into the Iron Hands, and with that oh. Intimidate, it's going to be enough to oh. pick up that one-hit knockout there. Iron Hands going back, and now uh, Arcanine's in a great position because it can uh, kind of switch out, switch back in. There's nothing that comes in on a rock slide now. Right, and uh, yeah, even with uh, Arcanine having to switch in and out to do that again, uh, not having that uh, you know ground type weakness, the fight type weakness to the Iron Hands, and probably going to be in Tailwinds. Uh, I'd say yeah, Adam has really turned this around from a positioning perspective. Uh, no Gastron in sight to uh, threaten uh, a yawn, uh, which actually I find pretty interesting since that the Arcanine is now locked into that Terra Blast, so it can't really. Uh, threaten that much damage onto the Gastrodon. So, uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how effective this Fluttermane will be here. Yeah, so, like, Fluttermane switching in does cause a little bit of a headache for Adam in that its Dazzling Gleam is going to do a lot of damage. Can't go for the Terra this time, the Terra Fairy uh, that it went for in the last game. Uh, but Adam, pretty content to just go for a Tailwind in this situation, go for a Terra Blast. Wouldn't be surprised if that's into the Landorus is now a Gastrodon slot and uh, Ooh, not good call. <laughs> that it's the other way around where the Gastrodon is resisting those fairy type hits but Dazzling Gleam is not quite enough to pick up the knockout here will be next turn uh, but that's a lot of damage that Renzo's got off this turn yeah I just love how back and forth this game is like at first it looked like you know Renzo's like you know really pulling ahead with all these yawns and then Adam got the Arcanine into a great position and you know got like a pretty critical knockout uh, but now, you know, I feel like Renzo's kind of bringing it back again because now the Gastrodon in a great position again. Like, the Arcanine just can't go for those rock slides. It has to switch out first. So, uh, I think this is a big turn for Renzo. Uh, just really needs to uh, capitalize big time. Yeah, and, and I think the best way to do that, and I really agree with what Renzo's doing in this situation, uh, Adam, at least on this turn, doesn't have too much counterplay to that Intimidate coming back in. Uh, the Tornadus may be able to use Bleak Windstorm to get KOs, but the Flutter may have oh. been knocked out by it first, and the Landra is surviving on one hit point, getting its speed dropped. I think that's less important than the Intimidate still being available for later in the game. Terra Blast going into that Flutter main and doing really not a lot of damage at all. Actually, I was about to say it was going to do a good amount of damage, but <laughs> not, not quite. Tornadus hanging on with just a thread that dazzling gleam doing so much work probably to adam and adam's benefit that that tornadoes wasn't going down that turn and wow uh yeah renzo really having a, a good time in uh bringing this back and putting that all that offensive pressure on the field yeah i mean even with the two intimidates on the Arcanine, the you know, Man is just so physically frail that you would think it would do at least you know 30 to 40 percent or something. But no, it just does like you know way less than that. And uh, look at the Floatermain's like HP number; it looks like it's a lot frail, but maybe it just has like, so much investment into its defensive stat. But the Power Whip knocking it out, uh, not intimidated, uh, that takes care of it. And the Bleak Winter Storm hitting, wow, so much back and forth. This is a big turn for Ryan. Yeah, like. I, I was thinking in that end game that the uh, Gastron would kind of not want to be the only Pokemon on the field. You kind of want maybe Fluttermane to do a little bit more damage um, once the Tailwind has expired for Renzo. Um, and so like I was thinking, hey, Adam needs to switch out the Arcanine, switch it back in, and then you've got the Rock Slide pressure onto the Gastrodon. But uh, Adam playing this slightly differently here, uh, probably relying a little bit more on the Iron Hands in the back, but as well as that, the Bleak Wind Storms coming out from that tornado single target now on onto the Gastrodon, going to be doing a, a, a good amount of damage. And the Ogre Pond on Adam's side of the field does have access to follow me. So for at least a couple of turns, can make sure that that tornado is able to put that chip damage down to, onto the Gastrodon. Right, and even though it looks pretty bleak for Renzo, so to speak, uh, it's still possible if we can get at least get a, maybe a freeze here. Uh, maybe if the Arcanine can miss a rock slide, you can get 
uh, a um, uh, you know a, a critical yawn onto it before it can do more rock slides. But uh, with the rain dance going up, uh, I think Adam has really identified uh, his win condition, which is to just keep bleak wind storming. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that bleak wind storm is is full accuracy, and therefore you're always going to be getting that single target damage down onto the Gastron. A little bit of a moot turn here. Follow me from the Ogre Pond and a protect from the Gastron. Nothing really major going to be happening in terms of what's going on this turn. But I think Renzo's playing this well, right? You, you need to make sure that the rain goes away as quickly as possible. Either that's going to create a free turn where Bleak Wind Storm may not hit, or a turn where the Tornadus is going to have to set up that rain dance again. Yeah, and with uh, the, the Yawn actually going in from the Gastrod on this turn, uh, it, it, Renzo continues to make this game very interesting, even though it's a 3v1, because now it's a, a selection for Adam where it's like, okay, it's very obvious that I should switch out into the Arcanine here, but if I do, like, maybe, you know, I'll get caught with an Earth Power or maybe an Ice Beam Freeze. Like, I think the one thing Adam doesn't want to do is expose um, his Arcanine to anything, because that's a pretty big win condition. But, but I think the Arcanine like, has, I think has I already got knocked out here. It's the Iron Hands in the back there for Adam's side of the field. And a really good turn for uh, the Iron Hands to be coming in because the temptation for Renzo when you're going for this Yawn endgame is to make sure that you're protecting every turn. You get a Yawn down, you get a Protect. The Pokemon that has been Yawned goes to sleep. And the way that Adam has taken advantage of that has been really, really good here. Getting that Iron Hands in going for that fake out, making sure there's no more yawns this turn, and another Bleak Wind Storm coming down into that Gastrodon. Yeah, I think with how low the HP is on that Gastrodon, uh, I think the writing is on the wall, and we see Renzo go for the forfeit. So, wow, what an excellent game, followed by a very interesting uh, end game that, you know, Adam 